is Kate Northrup, author of Money, A Love Story, and as part of the book launch, I'm interviewing some of my really good friends about their money love stories, and this is Rachel Goldstein, the CEO and founder of Agent of Change, and it's an event production company and soon to be a brand that's taking over the world, creating Agents of Change all over the world. I wanted to ask Rachel about hers. I know a little bit about it. It's pretty juicy. Um, because the more we talk about money, the more consciousness and love we can bring to it. And money is a conversation where I think people either don't talk about, about it enough or don't talk about it honestly enough. Right. And you and I were at the Wanderlust Festival in Vermont last summer. Yes. And I was giving my talk about something. <laughs> and you spoke up and were sharing your own story in a pretty transparent way. So I'd love to hear... I'll, I'll ask you some more follow-up questions, but if you want to just, like, start in, okay. that would be great. And then I'll just interrupt you and ask questions. All good. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I think what, what led, let me get up to where it was. Great. Basically, I, I was in $56,000 of debt um, for probably about five years of my life. I couldn't get out of it, and I couldn't figure out ways of getting out of it. And was that, uh, like, student, consumer, business? No, you ready? Business? Born and raised in New York City. Yeah. Um, I had this love affair of moving my apartment every year to two years. I could never find myself happiness. Maybe that's why I ended up in Bearsville, New York. <laughs> but um, maybe it was just I wasn't meant to be a uh -huh. city kid, even though I was the were, ultimate yeah. city kid. Um, and I moved up to an apartment on 68th Street between um, Broadway and Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And the apartment got bed bugs. And it cost me... $14,000 oh out of gosh. my own pocket Yeah, um, of throwing out everything I owned. And I yeah. was an antique market fanatic. So oh, all of my whoa. like one of a kind pieces I would never, ever, ever get again. Find again yeah. My mattress, my clothing had to be dry cleaned like four or five times over and over. The apartment oh. was fogged. $14,000 of expenses. Okay. Um, from that point, I... It was so stressful, <laughs> and prior to that, I had also had some a lot of dental work without okay. dental insurance. Okay, that was twenty five thousand dollars of expenses, uh -huh. twenty six thousand dollars of dental work. <laughs> Your teeth are gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> um, and again, nothing was taking that. I had broken uh -huh. three or four teeth from grinding, and uh -huh. I had TMJ, all these other yep. problems, and it just made um, a big fat big dent bill. in my life. And then. The, act, the other 20, I mean, like, what New Yorker isn't in debt? Yeah. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. It, People don't talk about that. Exactly. You know? And New York is such an expensive I city. Was, it was... It's so expensive. Yeah. Like, I am now living in a home that is 500... A three-bedroom house that is $500 less than my one-bedroom apartment in New York City. I know. I went from my... The most wonderful doorman who yeah. took care of me for yeah. the seven years I lived in that building yeah. to um, bears. Bears. <laughs> Literally, bears. <laughs> like, one can so totally pass us as we're speaking right now. I mean, making some of those changes and shifting... First of all, when I met you, you were working at Urban Zen, and now you run a rockin' company that's like produces every single major event in New York City that's worth going to, basically. Thank you. Um, Rachel knows everybody and, you know, has them all on speed dial. <laughs> and so, but I want to talk about the fact that, like, living that life, yeah, very well connected, super busy, like, you do, like, eight bazillion, how many events do you do a year, typically? Um, we do about, I would say, 10 to 20 fundraisers. Okay. Um, we use, we work in nonprofit, with nor nonprofit organizations for the, for the most part, um, for the Somali Mom Foundation mm -hmm. that stops sex trafficking in Cambodia, um, the Lower East Side Girls Club that has yeah. incredible after-school programming um, and weekend programming and camps for girls that live on the Lower East Side to um, the Blue School where we did an event with Dave Matthews and the Blue Man Group on their 20th yeah. anniversary of the Blue Man Group that raised money for the Blue School. Um, we've worked with uh, the Walkabout Foundation where they raise money for um, uh, for people who are, are in wheelchairs, but they really can't afford them. Yeah. So they give wheelchairs in need to like countries like Rwanda and mm -hmm. Chile. And that was with President Clinton and Martin Sheen, Emilio cool. Estevez. And we, we've done all these like really big high caliber events, but we do small ones also. Um, and we love it. Yeah. We love it. You it's know? amazing. It's amazing. And I want to know what about, so, so money equals value. Mm -hmm. It's just a stand in for what we value. Mm -hmm. And so what about your values shifted mm -hmm. a to allow you to start chipping away at that debt and b 
to give you kind of the freedom to come out here and live in Bearsville for $500 less a month than your one bedroom apartment and kind of like in a way unplug. I know you're obviously yeah. like you have wireless and you're very connected God to your bless. business. You run your business from right here. <laughs> but talk to me a little bit about that shift yeah. if there was any. Uh, it was a huge shift. Um, I went from working um, for Donna Karen's Urban Zen Foundation, and you know she was this incredible, beautiful visionary of of helping advance wellness, um, preservation of cultures, and empowering children. I was producing all these incredible, high-profile events, speaker series, mm -hmm. galas, all kinds of stuff in the Stephen Weiss studio, aka Urban Zen. Um, and I just got to a point where I was, thought I was. I just realized I was living someone else's dream. And I didn't wow. know what my dream was, but I knew what felt good and what felt good was helping others. So let me just ride on that. And prior to that, I was a publicist working for my family. And that alone was just like, I wasn't a publicist. People look to me as a publicist because right. I have a big mouth and I get not to get the word out. But like, <laughs> I don't ever, I never liked being called it. Got so it. like, again, like I just went from being a publicist in film, music and politics. Mm -hmm. And then I went from from just realizing that wasn't my calling to working in philanthropy, yeah. which felt better. And yeah. then I gradually um, left on a, um, which was interesting because it was one of the hardest decisions of my life. Um, and I had a, Im immediately had gotten a job offer, which was my first reason why I mm -hmm. left, that tripled my salary at Urban Zen. And wow. it was the director of events at the Standard Hotel. Uh -huh. And I was, it was almost like I was pushed back into that publicist uh -huh. role, uh -huh. um, which just didn't feel good to me. Yeah. So I went from people saying to me, hey, Rach, um, because of what I learned at the nutrition forum that you produced yeah. at Urban Zen, I saved my grandmother's life, to, hey, Rach, great party last night. Like, I was yeah. working from 9 a.m. to midnight. I was working with people that weren't on the same level of spirit with me that mm -hmm. wa wasn't making a difference. And I didn't write a business plan. I didn't <laughs> really know what I was doing. I yeah. never had thought of myself starting my own business, yeah. but I did. I had LLC'd my name, um, Agent of Change, um, years before because someone had called me it that I really respected. And you just were like, I'll just I'm LLC just gonna, that? LLC that. The That's second cool. she did, actually. It was actually my Kabbalah teacher way back when. And, I, and she called me her personal Agent of Change. I'm like, you've been teaching wow. me for how long? And so, long That's story. That's interesting. I mean, because just like... Forming an LLC is not, you know, it's not like buying a URL, no. right? Like that costs $12 and right. takes two seconds. So right. it's interesting that you had that intuition or Definitely. whatever you want to call it to be like, name I'm going like, to make an LLC of name. that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that works. So that, that happened years point. ago. That was in 2007. I, I LLC'd it just knowing that one day I was going to use it. Huh. Um, and then I left, when I left the standard, it was a matter of a month and I produced the Yoga Aid Challenge for Africa Yoga Project and Off the Mat Into the World. Mm -hmm. And my next event was Marie Forleo's Rich, Happy, and Hot. This is amazing. Which was the first totally. one of three that yeah. we did immediately. And I, we, Marie didn't do it before. I didn't do it before, right. but we rocked it. You, absolutely. <laughs> we had an absolute Absolutely. Blast. And then the following event, we helped produce the Dalai Lama's Peace Summit in Newark, mm. New Jersey. And it was just amazing. So, so, I mean, I've known you through that transition. Things seem to be going well. But <laughs> I want to know, right. kind of on the financial front, you went from having a salary, right. then getting that salary tripled, then realizing that work was right. not for your soul, this to kind of jumping ship and going out there on your own. So how has that been as part of your money love story? The second I started making money for myself was really interesting. <laughs> it was like, okay, this is how much me and my one other person in staff <laughs> need yeah. for salary and yeah. the few people I need for production. And okay, I could put this chunk this month towards that thing called debt. Right. And I will never forget, it was March 31st at 7.29 a.m. And I had this big check that had come in from a retainer fee that yeah. I was on. And we, we, we get paid by retainer. Yeah. Um, and it was that last $10,000. <laughs> and it was 7.29 in the morning because I remember wow. like looking at the clock and it was like, I remember the date. And I was just like, I went online on my bankofamerica.com, which uh -huh. is my life. <laughs> and I do all my banking on that, personal yeah, yeah. and business. And I just said, you know, pay, done. pay, done. And I texted my mom. I think yes. it was my mom at 7.29 in the morning. I was like, I am out of debt. And oh I was just gosh. like sitting in my bed. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was such an amazing feeling to just know that that wasn't over me. And yeah, right. we had so many expenses and 
lessons and being yeah. in business for three years. Having a staff. Oh, and, having a staff. Yeah. And, you know, we're not, I never sat down and wrote the business plan. Mm -hmm. I still haven't wrote the business plan, which is interesting. You're just doing it. Yeah, we just <laughs> did it, which has its pros and cons because sure. the future of Agent Change is just getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. so, yes, we do events and strategic marketing for a lot of cool um, wellness either products or mm -hmm. authors or what have you, but the next level is going to need some financing. So we're in that mode so right now. So you'll be in that mode, yeah. And that's taking on debt in a different way. Yeah. yeah. Are, we're not in it right exactly. now. It's just right. monthly you know, credit exactly. card. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Amex. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just really want to congratulate you on Thank that because it's like a lot of debt yeah. that you to one woman got to out of on your own. Yeah, I did. By adding value to the world and oh, giving back. Yeah. Which is a really like that's an important message. It doesn't have to be about selling your soul and taking yeah. the triple salary job and struggling. Exactly. To do that like yeah. with your whole interior yeah, it's just, integrity. It just didn't, it didn't, it's true. And I think I've, every time I always say this, you got to live it to learn it. Yeah. Um, which I think is my new tagline. Nice. I like that. <laughs> we are if I don't if I needed to experience working um, for a philanthropy. Yeah. I needed to experience knowing that that helped people. Yeah. I needed to experience working for a company that just didn't feed me, not knocking the hotel. It's a beautiful hotel. I oh love gosh, you, Andre Blas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not knocking no, the hotel. Yeah, of course. Um, I, it, it was just not what I represented inside. Yeah. And so that was just hard. And then when I went on my own, it just, I just only we only take things that make a difference that's amazing and you can you can make that choice you can make that choice and still have more than enough to pay your bills and support a staff of six people and, and you know Bearsville. and live in Bearsville which <laughs> who doesn't want to live in Bearsville <laughs> and Bearsville is five minutes not even five seconds from Woodstock New York. which is yeah it's great <laughs> so. Um, so tell me obviously nobody's money love story is ever complete and it's always a journey and what's been interesting with this book is that um, I've had people who are in massive debt tell me it's been helpful to them, and I've had seven-figure earners who've been financially independent for years tell them it's been helpful. So that's cool. That's awesome. Um, we love anyone who helps us break it down. Yeah, you got to break it down. You got to like pay attention. But I want to know what's the next frontier for you with money. Well, it's funny. I always say now my another one of my slogans is I didn't start agent of change to make money I made it to make change uh -huh. I did like remember That's that funny. I didn't make agent of change to make <laughs> money so I made it to make change <laughs> yeah and so when I went into business for myself it wasn't like oh my god how much money can right. I make it's how much help how many people in the world can I help mm -hmm. and it was really true to me now that we're third year celebration last week yay yay, yay um in business it is it's a time to I want to have that you know that COO position yes. I want to have right. that that vice president of marketing, that vice president of events, that vice president of the literary department, because we yep. do so much with authors. Yep. I'm building the Agent of Change channel right now, which will be how how to television on becoming an Agent of Change. Mm -hmm. We're creating an entire youth initiative of um, little Agent of Change rangers of sorts, where <laughs> they'll that. be able to give product, uh, you know, their project to us, and we'll be able to vote on yeah. it. And is this something a project that will really get the cool. a AOC stamp? Yeah of approval and we'll be able to help them build their yeah. dreams up. And so it's like creating this network. It's a network of agents of change mm -hmm. and really, so money and growth for you financially is about how many people you can help. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. That's so great. That's where it that starts. so great. Thank you. And I know we'll make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you already are. Yeah. The books, everything else will come. Yeah. I that's why I keep saying. I'm, like, I'm, I'm living it. I'm you still are. living what I'm going to write. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you will be until the end, right? Exactly. Because if it were oh. over, how boring would that be? I had a feeling the <laughs> other day. I was like, man, maybe I should just move. I have six employees. Like, do I stop here and just go get some great job at a foundation? No. Oh my God, that. don't ever do that. <laughs> I'd have to I wanna, like come up here I have and have an a after smack 50, down. I have, a, I have an after 50 plan. Oh, what is it? Summer camp. You want to run a summer camp that raises little agents of change? Oh my God, that's amazing! Wouldn't that be you should so do it much in Bearsville. fun in Bearsville, New York? <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't that be awesome? No, that would be like, let's give them their money I lessons. Know. Let's give them their vegan cooking. Totally. Let's, give them, let's just get all our my kids will be too old, we'll but maybe the they could be counselors. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm like calculating. I'm like, could my kids? No, that'll be too. No, it's not gonna work. But awesome. thank you so much for sharing thank your story. You I really appreciate it. Yeah. And, if you 
want to hear more money love stories, go to moneyalovestory.com. If you want to find out more about Rachel, go to agentofchange.com. No, it's agentofchangenetwork.com. Thank you. Agentofchangenetwork.com, and the link is below the video. <laughs> and um, when you grab yourself a copy of this book over at moneyalovestory.com, you'll get free access to a two-hour live event I'm doing called a course in having enough, which Rachel has obviously figured out. <laughs> and I'll be co-teaching that with Marianne Williamson, Barbara Stanny, and Amanda Steinberg, who founded dailyworth.com. So go check out moneyalovestory.com, go check out agentofchangenetwork.com, and see if you can find yourself at one of the amazing events that Rachel puts on. Thank you for sharing your Thank money love you. story. I Thank so you, appreciate Kate. it. <laughs>